Hey T-Heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you five tips on how best to travel with tea. I absolutely adore traveling. We've just landed here in Buenos Aires. We're here for a few days before heading over to Brazil. I love traveling, experiencing new cultures, gaining new perspectives, and of course, tasting and smelling new foods and drinks, all of which feed back into my tea tasting. But of course, I also love tea and my life would be a little bit sadder if I didn't have true tea at my fingertips every single day. And so I always travel with tea and I'm just going to be sharing five tips on how I go about doing that. The first tip relates to teaware, which teaware you, you choose to bring. Now, we created this, the Gong Fu story, a few years ago. And this is the ultimate way to travel with teaware because it's all padded inside and you've got lots of different compartments. And when we do sort of short haul traveling or when we know we're gonna have extravagant setups, then we'll load up a Gong Fu story with teaware. You can also put the tea tray, there's a pocket for a tea tray in here. And it's a great way to travel with teaware. But on long haul flights like this, we try to keep things minimal because we've got lots of luggage. We don't want to be carrying around too much. So we keep things very minimal. Um, and for that, you can try to find some of these travel sets. I have tried lots and lots of Gong Fu travel sets. None of them have really met the mark for me. None of them have, have really given me everything that I want in terms of a travel set. You can also get those Gong Fu on the go brewers. You may have seen them where they sort of split leaf with water. Again, we've tried so many of those over the years, none of which really I like. I don't think that they, they do justice to Gong Fu brewing. And so for me, the most basic setup is to bring a fruit brewer. Um, sometimes we bring clay pots. And if you are gonna bring a clay pot, then put the clay pot in its padded box and make sure that you uh, rubber band the, uh, the, the lid down. So you, you take some rubber bands and you make sure the lid is pressed down so it doesn't um, move around in transit. And I would advise you to pick Gen Shui or Nishin clay. Gen Shui and Nishin clay, both of which are very, very uh, durable and they're very unlikely to break. But I also just love the flute brewer. You can see we've kept the box because it's all beautifully padded in here. So nothing is gonna break. And what I love about the flute brewer is it just, it's, it's such a small footprint way to brew any tea type. You've got, you know, your infuser that sits inside the tube, the flute brewer tube. And so you put your leaf in, you put your water in, and you can just pull this out once you've brewed, put this to the side, and then you can use any cups that are around. So you can use, you know, cups that are in the Airbnb or at the hotel or at your friend's place. And so just with this minimal setup, you can do gong for brewing of any tea type. And glass is perfectly suitable for all tea types. Yes, some people say, well, it's, you know, for really, uh, teas that really require a lot of heat when extracting, like uh, ripe pua or maybe some uh, raw puas, you might want uh, to not brew in glass, but I think it's fine. When you're traveling, this is a great way to just brew up without, as I said, having any real major setup. Um, and you can use cups, you can bring cups if you want, you can bring small cups. But again, if you wanna keep your footprint as light as possible, then this is always in my suitcase when I'm traveling. You just can't go wrong with it. It's just the easiest way to set up and go gong fu brewing without any fuss and really, really, I mean, it's super, super light as well. And as I said, if you keep the box, it's all padded so you don't have to worry at all. It's gonna stay uh, in one piece wherever you go. Of course, as I said, you can bring as much or as little teaware as you want. This is the most minimal setup. You could bring gaiwans, you could bring cups, you could bring all sorts. Um, it's up to you. Make sure you have a padded bag or you wrap them up well. So that's the first tip. Select your teaware carefully. Focus on how much brewing you're gonna do, how expansive your sessions are gonna be, and try to keep it as minimal as possible. The second tip, of course, is about your tea, which teas you're gonna bring. And I like to make sure that I have enough variation so that I you know, can continuously be tasting different things. And I also want to be having teas that are suitable for morning, suitable for afternoons, and suitable for evenings, especially after eating heavy meals, because if I'm traveling, then the diet goes out the window and I'm tasting as much as I can. So sometimes 
often I'm overdoing it a little bit. So I want to make sure that I have some good digestive tea. So we'll see what, what we brought on this trip. So we've got some Longjing Supreme. I love that in the morning, a great green tea for the morning. We've got some raw pua, I've got tub highness. I've got black tea, baidu gold. I've got uh, yen cha, summer haze. I've got amber gaba, the essential amber gaba, the, the required uh, most comforting brew, I think, in our collection. Superior iron goddess for something a little bit brighter and fresher. We've got a white tea, white peony king. And we've got a new raw ripe pua, which I'm not going to reveal the name of because view may, it may not have been released by the time this video is released. So we've got another ripe pua. So you see I've got white, I've got green, I've got oolong, light oolongs, medium oolongs, dark oolongs, a raw pua, a black tea and a ripe pua. And what I like to do is get little pouches like this and just put in enough for sort of four or five sessions so that you've got a good selection throughout your trip. Obviously it depends on how much you, uh, how long your travels are. And it also depends upon how much tea you think you're going to be drinking. If you think you're going to be drinking with friends, for example, if you're visiting a country where there's, where you have lots of friends and you want to have lots of sessions then you may want to bring more, but this is how we like to do it. Small pouches and a wide selection. Also bear in mind the weather uh, of the country of the destination that you're going to, it might be, if it's cold, you might want to select different teas compared to if it's hot, like it is here in Buenos Aires. So we've got the teaware, we've got the tea, and that leads us to tip number three, which is water. Water is so, so, so fundamental. I can't tell you the number of times that I have visited a country with my favorite tea only to drink it and think, well, this is not even 50% of the potential of this tea. And so water is fundamental. If you're lucky enough to go to a country where the tap water is filtered and is soft and is sweet and is delicious, then all good, great. But chances are you're gonna have to go and find yourself some mineral water. The problem with mineral water is it is very mineral and oftentimes is quite hard and contains a lot of calcium. And the calcium stops extraction of tea. Calcium is the key mineral to look out for when you're selecting mineral water. You want it to be as low as possible. You can taste when there's too much calcium in the water that you use to make your tea because it just feels under extracted. It's not soft, it's not thick. It loses um, its flavor, it's weak and it has this sort of sharp, slightly aggressive quality. So the first thing that I usually do, which is what I'm doing now when I arrive somewhere, is head to the supermarket and see if I can find the water of choice for my tea brewing. And I'll be looking for water which is as low in calcium as possible. Definitely under 50 milligrams per liter, but hopefully a lot lower than that. Now this isn't gonna be a guarantee that it's gonna make great tea. Obviously there's plenty of other factors in water to determine whether or not it's gonna be uh, good for making tea, but it's at least one factor that you can look out for. So I'm heading over to a supermarket in Buenos Aires, and we're gonna see if we can find the perfect water for our tea. All right, so we've got our mineral water. They didn't want me to film in there, which is fair enough, but the mineral water's in there, averaged around 40 to 50 milligrams per liter of calcium. This one here though has 17, so a big difference. So it's worth just taking a little look around at the labels, see if we can find the best water. Let's go back and see how it makes tea. All right, let's test this water. I've got some Longjing Supreme brewing in the flu brewer, but I just want to taste the water first. You can tell a lot just by tasting it. Uh, pure like this. What I'm looking for is something soft. This is going to be good, I think, this water. It's soft, it's sweet, it's thick. It doesn't have that sharp mineral harshness that tends to come from calcium, which is sometimes nice when you want to just drink pure water. But when you're looking for water for tea, you want that soft, sweet, supple quality. I think this is going to brew up a nice tea. Let's just check though. Longjing Supreme. A tea which should be elegant, sweet, sugared. 
and thick and this one is i mean this is very very good water for tea it's not perfect there's still a slight mineral edge to it that i would be looking to sort of shave off and if you put some bamboo charcoal in this i think it would be spectacular hmm very 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 happy with this water so choosing water is absolutely essential now the fourth tip is how you're going to brew this tea now of course you've got your tea where you've got your tea you can have your sessions in your hotel in your apartment with friends etc but oftentimes when you're traveling you want to get out and about you want to see the sights you want to hear the sounds and so the best way for me to do that with tea is to cold brew especially because i generally travel to countries which are hotter than the uk so what i'm going to be doing is taking these leaves and putting them in this water now ideally you'd want to leave it for a day in the uh, overnight in the fridge for example or leave it for a good few hours we don't have that luxury because we're going to go out and explore buenos aires now but Putting leaves in and allowing it to brew either cold or ambient temperature is a great way to have tea whilst exploring and seeing all of the sights. Uh, and that again brings us to the point of which teas you're gonna bring on your travels. If you're planning to cold brew, then I personally prefer to cold brew the fresher tasting teas, for example, green teas, yellow teas. And I actually really like some of the very floral and bright black teas too. You drink it, the leaves are annoying, just use the teeth, they're the filter. Or just eat the leaves. Uh-huh. Then. Do you want some tea? No thanks. No thanks. <laughs> Revitalize yourself. And chewing the leaves like these animals are chewing the herbs. They're very, they're very tasty. They're extremely tasty. <laughs> and the fifth and final tip for traveling with tea is less of a tip and more of a gesture of goodwill. And that is to never come back home with any tea. What I mean by that is, of course, you're going to be bringing enough tea to consume on your journey, but any that you've left over, make sure you don't miss the opportunity to spread the word about true tea by leaving some tea behind for others to experience. When we're staying in an Airbnb, you'll see that the cupboard has usually got the obligatory tea bags, and we, in this case, are going to be leaving this Longjing Supreme here. If you're ever lucky enough to visit an Airbnb uh, that we've stayed in, you'll see that the cupboards are usually loaded with pinnacle tea from us because it's the perfect opportunity to spread the word and share the good stuff with other people. And if you're not staying in an Airbnb, then maybe you can give it to friends or you can give it to people that you meet on your travels. There you go, those are my five tips for traveling with tea let me know if you have any more in the comments section below that's it yes check out other videos taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in london other than that i'm don a little bit sad to be leaving buenos aires but we're heading over to rio next so life ain't that bad thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea stay away from those tea bags keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea bye